Do you know how to describe the type of person that Allah wants us to be? What sort of character we should be? By the end of this video, you will know what Allah says to us, what Allah commands us in terms of the type of personality traits that we as individuals need to have. As we go about our day-to-day -day lives, as we go about handling our day-to-day -day affairs, and once we know this, we will spend a moment reflecting on what we need to do. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Munib Ali. Welcome to another video on the Quran Study Channel. So, this is us. Well, actually, this is a silhouette of a man. But it could be a woman. It could be a young person. It could even be quite an elderly person. It doesn't matter because these are the characteristics of a person that follows Allah's commands. These are the characteristics of a mu'min. Now, there are lots of characteristics here and you will see that I have given references from the Quran which mention and describe these personality traits. I'm not intending to go through all of these as otherwise we will be here for a long time. But I will mention a few which I think we need to really think about. Because I currently see a world where we are not seeing enough of these characteristics. Please do feel free to share this video with your friends relatives, family and the young kids that you know. Explain this to them because the next generation needs to be better than ours. Also, if you would find it useful to have this picture electronically, I can email it to you or I can put it up on our website for you to download. Leave me a comment and let me know. Okay, the first one I want to mention is this one here. Allah wants us to be a thinker, a user of reason and logic. Allah wants us to use our minds. Allah says, the worst of living creatures are those who do not use reason in chapter 8 verse 22. The worst of living creatures. Think about that. In fact, Allah commands us not to even follow his instructions in the Quran without first pondering over them, really thinking about them, understanding the logic behind them. You can refer to chapter 25 verse 73 of the Quran for this. I mention this because so many of us do not use logic, so many of us do not use reason, we do not think about Allah's commandments and the logic behind them before we accept them and before we follow them. Next, Allah wants us to be honest and truthful. I see a world and I would say this is endemic in so many so-called Muslim majority countries where lying is the norm. People do not hesitate to lie. It is so common that one cannot differentiate if someone speaking to you is lying or not. And so there is no trust between people. What sort of society do you think will form if this happens? And this is what we see as a result of not being honest and truthful. We really need to reflect on this, brothers and sisters. Another one related to being honest. Allah wants us to be somebody who keeps our promises and commitments. Do we always keep our commitments? Our commitment to Allah? Our commitment to our spouses? Our commitment to our employers? Our employees? Our commitments to our families and friends? Let me give you a simple example. And it's quite a low level example, but it is real. When we promise to visit somebody at a particular time, it could be a social visit, 
It could be a wedding, whatever it is. Do we get there on time? Do we get there at the time that we promised? There are many communities where it is common to reach the venue at least two hours late. How can we function as a society, as people, if our commitments are not met? If we really are mu'min, we will keep our promises and commitments. Allah wants us to be good to our parents. Now, I have just done a three-part series of videos just on this, just on doing ihsan with our parents. Watch the videos, please. It is so important and so many people do not understand what Allah has commanded in this regard. Let's move to being humble and not boastful. When we achieve something, when we succeed in something, it may be in terms of education, a job, of becoming wealthy. Do we stay humble or do we think, I did it? Do we recognize that Allah actually did it and he has given with it to us additional responsibilities? Or do we think, I did it and I will do with this what I please. I managed to get this wealth, I will spend it as I please. Allah wants us to be forgiving. Is it the case that we expect Allah to forgive us whilst we ourselves do not forgive others? Whilst we maintain grudges against other people, against our own family members who we have promised not to speak to again? I have seen this happen. Let's reflect. Allah commands us to be forgiving. Gentle, soft speech. Allah commands us to have a nice, soft, gentle speech. In fact, in chapter 31, verse 19, Allah compares the speaking in a loud voice to the voice of a donkey. So, we should reflect. Do we raise our voice? Do we raise our voice with our kids? With our spouses? With our parents? With others? A gentle, soft speech is much more effective in getting attention, in getting people to understand, to connect with people and to influence them. Allah wants us to be inclusive and not discriminating. I have done a few videos about this on our channel, about the global pandemic we have been experiencing for generations to do with discrimination. Let's be honest, most of us discriminate. Whether it is to do with people's beliefs, their gender, their color, we discriminate. We do. This is a big problem with us as individuals and with our society. Please do see my videos that explain this in the light of the Quran. A person that follows Allah's instructions does not consume others' possessions and connected with this does not take bribes. I want to mention these because whilst this may seem obvious, there are so many countries, including many Muslim majority countries, where societies as a whole do not have this as part of their character. Let me give you one example. Muslims have all been taught that riba is haram. And most people understand riba to be the interest on our bank accounts. We go straight there. We go straight to interest on bank accounts. Well, guess what? Allah describes what riba is and what is prohibited. And what is prohibited is the consumption of others' possessions. That is the definition of arriba, which is prohibited. Possessions that are not rightfully yours. That includes taking bribes. That includes lending money for the purpose of taking control of the borrower's possessions. That includes taking illegal possession of somebody else's land or their house. That includes robberies. That includes copyright fraud and piracy. It is so ironic 
that we Muslims make so much noise about the interest on our bank accounts, whilst countries that we control are so immensely steeped in al riba. The second last one I want to mention is that Allah wants us to verify facts before we act. I want to mention this because this applies in all aspects of our lives. And generally, there is one particular thing we do not do this with. And that is when it comes to the matter of our deen, the matter of Islam. There are so many of us who blindly follow whatever we have heard from our forefathers or an imam or someone with the title mufti and we do not challenge it. This has led to two things. Number one, differences between people, conflict. Number two, it has moved us away from the Quran. There is so much falsehood within the practices of Islam today because we are not in the habit of using our minds and we are not in the habit of verifying facts. We must verify everything through the Quran which contains the word of our Creator. It is not the word of man, it is the word of Allah. It is perfect, complete and fully detailed. And the last one I want to mention is that we need to set a good practical example for others. We must practice these characteristics which I've mentioned today and the other ones which are on this chart every day. If we do that, we will set a good example and we will see the results. And once we see the results, we will influence other people. And then, gradually, as more and more people become this person, societies will change. And isn't that so desperately needed in today's world? I don't know about you, but I wish I had seen this picture when I was attending Islamiyat classes in school. I've said this before, there is insufficient education about the Quran and these types of things for our kids in schools. We teach them how to recite the Quran. We teach them how to pray and how to recite verses of the Quran when they pray. We teach them the history of the prophets, but we don't show them this picture. The picture of the type of person that Allah commands us to be. Let me know in the comment section if you agree with me. And it's not too late. You can still put this picture up on your screens. You can print it out and put it on your fridge. You can show it to others. You can make sure your children understand. Brothers and sisters, let's look in the mirror and reflect on ourselves. Let's see which areas of our characters we need to improve. None of us are perfect, but we can all improve. Let's become this person that Allah has described. Let's improve. Let's change. Let's reform. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next week, Assalamu Alaikum. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ